After the other one, it would be seven years before Richard Briers had another hit TV series. He appeared in the TV adaptation of Alan Akebourne's play The Norman Conquests, alongside Penelope Keith and Penelope Wilton. But Goodbye Mr Kent, co-starring Hannah Gordon, lasted only one series. Esmond and Larby weren't faring much better, though Larby had a solo hit in 1981 with a fine romance starring Judi Dench and Michael Williams. Then, in the early 80s, Esmond and Larby happened upon a scene that they thought would not only make a great situation comedy, but also might prove to be a perfect role for Richard Briers. They were walking along Clapham Common one day, going somewhere, and there was a football match on. And in the middle was his referee. Shouting and nagging and blowing his whistle, and this is offside, that's not right, what are you doing? Offside! And it was the end of the match, they all, they all ran off in the distance. And leaving this chap, you know, sort of saying, Oh, wait for me, lads! Don't rush off, don't rush off, because they couldn't wait to get away from the bucker. All right, you've asked for this. <laughs> so Martin was born. In 1984, Esmond, Larby and Briars combined the lessons they'd learned from the success of The Good Life and the failure of the other one to create the strangely endearing, obsessive-compulsive, Mole Valley Valve's middle manager oddball, Martin Bryce, for ever-decreasing circles. <laughs> A lot of series are about what people do, what they try to get done, what this, that and the other. This was about the inside of his head more than anything else. Again, Martin. Won't take a check. Things like colour coding, counting, clean shoes. Everything in its place and a place for everything. <laughs> Bob Larby said, You're the only actor we can think of who will give it some kind of charm to this appalling character. So I've often thought if I hadn't gone into valves, I'd have taken up psychiatry. <laughs> they knew I could be vulnerable. And so I employed vulnerability into Martin. Ever Decreasing Circles was directed by Sidney Lotterby, a legendary name in TV comedy. One of his many career highlights was the classic Sykes and a Plank. Aye, aye. <laughs> this is going to be funny. <laughs> Yeah, I could have walked right into that plank. Oh. Why didn't you warn me? Plank or plank? <laughs> Sidney Lotterby's CV was a roll call of almost all the big BBC sitcoms of the 70s and 80s, including Up Pompeii, Porridge, Some Mothers Do Have Them, and Yes Minister, starring The Good Life's Paul Eddington. Our audience could recognise the character of Martin uh, and probably knew someone like him. And you had the added thing, of course, of uh, this poor woman living with him. I mean, that was another reason, I think, the audience took to the scripts. Do you know what I'm going to do now? No, Martin. <laughs> I'm going to make us both a nice cup of cocoa. <laughs> Martin's long-suffering wife was Anne, an attractive, intelligent woman who was all too aware of Martin's shortcomings, but loved him nonetheless. Is anything getting you down? <laughs> now, come on, you, you, if you can't talk to me, who can you talk to? Now, tell me. Well... at your bloody watch. I'm just checking. How long have we got? Oh, 20 minutes. Oh, forget it. Forget it. Forget it. Three times again, love. Oh, go to <laughs> Penelope Wilton's television career started in adaptations of stage classics like Mrs Warren's Profession. Frankly, I'm not going to stand any more of your nonsense. And as soon as you drop it, I won't expect you to stand any of mine. She had first appeared opposite Richard Briers, needless to say, in the TV version of Alan Akebourne's The Norman Conquests, before her career took a new direction with ever-decreasing circles. You took me as your prisoner. At first, I hated everything you stood for. But physically, I am a woman, after all. You made me your mistress, and since then I've followed you from <laughs> battlefield to battlefield like a slave. <laughs> Crumbs. He's married to me and I'm a bit younger and also yearn for something perhaps a bit more than 
was going on in this little cul-de-sac we were living in. Yes, Martin? I've got the milk on. Good. <laughs> in other words, I am making the oval team. <laughs> Like many women, she realised she'd married a child. So she coped with it, as women do. Come on. <laughs> Hello, Martin. How are you? Caught into a pipe pot, my friend. The unsophisticated world that Martin and Anne inhabit is turned upside down by the smooth and suave Paul Ryman, who seems as different from Martin as it's possible to be. I must have done something really terrible in a previous life and he's been sent to punish me in this one. <laughs> All I was saying in the most neighbourly way I could think of was to point out that a nice community like ours does have its little do's and don'ts. And house names are one of them. Peter Regan's first major TV role was in the 1968 BBC adaptation of Cold Comfort Farm, which would help him carve out a niche in smarmy characters. Aye, <laughs> women's nonsense. Women be all alike. Fussing with their foul owls and be dazing a man's eyes. Another graduate of RADA, his background was mainly classical theatre and period TV dramas, such as the character of Oscar Wilde in the miniseries Lily in 1978 and Prince Regent in 79. Peter Egan, like Penelope Wilton, had also worked with Richard Bryars on the stage, this time in George Bernard Shaw's Arms and the Man. My agent rang me up and said, um, do you fancy doing a comedy series for the BBC? And I said, well, I've never done any comedy because I was always doing kind of period stuff, you know, like the Prince Regent or Oscar Wilde, stuff like that. Long live His Majesty King Charles I! So I said, Richard Bryars is in it, and they said yes, and so I said, OK, I'll do it. The great thing is to get actors from the stage, I think, especially with sitcom, because they're used to audiences and uh, they're used to interacting with others, and the great thing about comedy is the way you react to the other person. Hello, Martin. Going fishing? I can't walk past you carrying anything, can I? If it's a board, it's Hello Martin going to a board meeting. If it's a pole, it's Hello Martin, where's the pole from? Warsaw? <laughs> carrying a whale, I'd probably say, Hello Martin, are you having a whale of a time? Yes, you probably would. And as usual, you've gone straight down Silly Avenue. <laughs> Where would I get a whale from? Whales? <laughs> Lunatic. You could have caught it with your fishing rod. Looney, that's what you are. You're a loony. Now I look back on it, my God, this is a very good double act. This little kind of ratty man and this wonderful six foot two, wonderful man. <laughs> Hello, Martin. You know. Hello, Martin. It's situation comedy. I think it's one of the hardest things to do. It forces you to use yourself a lot, which is very, very good for modern acting as opposed, opposed to period acting. So you learn an awful lot about acting by doing it. Stop that. I just stop it. Martin, could you be masterful without shaking? <laughs> it's wonderful to goad somebody who you know you're going to get a reaction from, and it worked every time. <laughs> <laughs> this is the life, eh, Martin? Busy doing nothing. You need good actors to do lightweight stuff. This very sort of thin ice stuff can go out of the window, can be lost, even unless you've got people who really know their uh, technique and craft. So we got, you know, very high standard there, as we did in the good life.